Hi everyone, um, uh, if you haven't met me, I'm Georgia um, and I have the absolute privilege of being on the staff team here at St. Wynne's um, uh, as the student pastor, so I get to look after all the lovely students in Totten. Um, and over the last few weeks, for those of you who have been with us, um, we have been looking at the book of Acts. Um, and John spoke to us last week about stepping out and obeying God, um, which follows on nicely. And this week we're going to be speaking about how do we encounter Jesus. So today we're going to be looking at Acts 9. Um, oh, that's just me on the screen. <laughs> um, and um, Acts 9 tells the story of Saul, who was a persecutor of Christians. But actually, what the story is about, it's actually about how Saul encounters Jesus in a really dramatic and life-changing way. So, the lovely Harry is going to kind of come up and read our passage today. Um, and yeah, then I'll be back. I'm not used to the microphone. So, Max 9. What's wrong? What have I got wrong? Act 9. <laughs> Saul's conversion. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. <coughs> as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men traveling with Saul stood there speechless. They heard the sound, but did not see anyone. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. For three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. In Damascus there was a disciple named Ananias. The Lord called him in a vision. Ananias. Yes, Lord, he answered. The Lord told him, Go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Lord, Ananias answered, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your holy people in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priests to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he has must suffer for my name. Then Ananias went to the house and entered it. Placing his hands on Saul, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me so that you may, be, may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he could see again. He got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. Wow. Um, I just think that is um, such a breathtaking encounter. So for so um, for Saul, who was out there persecuting Christians um, and not being very well behaved, um, Jesus saw him, saw something in him and still wanted to know him. So I think we can learn a lot from Saul, but also from Ananias in this passage. Um, so oh, let me just find my place. Sorry. Um, 
If you know Jesus, can you remember where you were when you first encountered him? I know the first time I encountered Jesus, I wasn't in a very good place myself. Um, I probably wasn't going around giving murderous threats like Saul was, but um, I was quite lost. Um, I was quite an anxious person, quite a worrier, um, and I um, didn't really understand at this time why it was that Jesus wanted to encounter me then. But then, as I started to read the Bible, um, I actually came across a verse from a, from a different book, the book of Mark, um, that said, it should be coming up on the screen, um, it's Mark 2, verse 17. On hearing this, Jesus told them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Um, and now I kind of get it. That verse really helped me to understand um, that actually I didn't need to look a, way, a certain way. I didn't need to act a certain way. I didn't even really need to be that good of a person. Um, uh, Jesus just wanted to know me as I was, um, and he wanted to have an encounter with me. Um, so yeah, I was pretty blind before I knew Jesus, and kind of just like Saul was, really, going around, minding my own business, doing my thing, whatever I thought was the right thing to do. Um, and actually, just like Saul didn't probably realize he was blind, I didn't really either. Um, I, For me, I didn't necessarily think I'm really blind and I'm a really bad person, but it was just a sense of nothing ever being able to really feel me. Um, nothing really had the answer I was looking for. It was like, I don't know if you guys have had it, when um, you're looking for something and there's just something missing, uh, you're not quite happy or how you think um, you should be. And, and I'm a mental health nurse, so I have lots of answers of how to make yourself happy, but there was always something missing. Um, and it was all, almost that kind of like, I'll be happy when this happens, or I'll be happy when that happens. So I was 16, and I was going to college, and I thought, this is it. When I get to college, I'm going to be happy. Got to college, mm, no, nothing really changed. And then I thought, well, it's because I don't drive. So, you know, did my driving lessons, did my driving test, was driving around in my little car. Uh, no, still still there was just that, that bit missing. And then I thought, wow, well, all my friends are going on holidays, and they seem to be having an amazing time. So maybe, maybe if I go on like five, six holidays a year, like I might finally be happy. And I came back from everyone probably a bit jet lagged and just not overly happy. So very soon came to realize that nothing was going to have that answer that I wanted. Um, and I think um, as a society, we all do this. Um, I think if you, you know, we can all be really blind sometimes. And I mean, look at advertisement companies. They are basically trying to sell us that thing that we think is gonna make us happy. So, um, yeah, if you, it's like when you're watching TV, if you just buy this iPhone or if you just go on this holiday, you know, you will have made it and you'll be super, super happy. Um, I even, you know, I've been brainwashed as well. I am. Um, <laughs> There's like a chicken dipper advert on TV. I don't know if anyone's seen it. And there's like a family and they're all sat around and they're like all smiling, really happy. And I think at the end it says something like, this will make your family dinners or something like that. And like, I wanted to go out and buy a, ba a bag of chicken dippers and I'm a vegetarian. So like, <laughs> I mean, they're obviously doing something right, trying to sell me this 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 perfect family dinner setup. Um, but on a more serious note, um, I do remember the first time I encountered Jesus. Um, and as we said earlier, um, it was through a friend inviting me to Alpha um, that I, I went to Alpha and in, had an amazing time. Wouldn't necessarily n say I noticed that I'd encountered Jesus there, um, but then encountered Jesus in a really, really dramatic way um, when I was at a Sunday service um, in the morning. Um, it was like a sense of peace just washing over me. And it was, I knew it was Jesus because it was, 
it was like that thing that I was trying to fill with everything else had been filled, and I was like, well, I've spent a lot of money on this. Like, why couldn't you come, come along a little bit sooner? But um, <laughs> it was, nonetheless, it was amazing, um, and so amazing that I then went back to the evening service at church, and then I was, like, reading my Bible for, like, 10 hours straight a day and was, like, super, super excited. I can tell you I don't do that now. Um, but, yeah, it was, like, a really, really dramatic encounter and just really, really amazing. Um, and everyone experiences Jesus differently. So just because mine was in a dramatic way doesn't mean everyone's is. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I really think that in the passage, when Saul is blind for, oh, I think it's like three days, but I can't remember, but however many days, um, I think that is really given as a clear image to us of everybody who is separated from Jesus. Um, and there are primar pr 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 primarily two forms of spiritual blindness. Um, so the first is, I, I don't know why I look up there because it's, it's not there. Um, the, first, <laughs> the first form of blindness um, is irreligious blindness. So this is where we believe that our way is better than God's way. So this is kind of like, my blindness that I described. So before I knew Jesus, I just thought that I had the answers to life. I had the answers to my happiness. I had all the answers. I will still tell my husband that I have all the answers because I do. <laughs> um, but actually, the Bible calls that sin. So the, what is the middle letter of sin? I. So it's I have the answers. I would rather be in charge of my life. Um, because I probably know better than Jesus. I probably know better than God. Um, and that sin can look different for different people. So for Saul, it looked like going around murderously threatening people um, and being super, super nasty. Um, but actually for me, it didn't really look like that. It was more of a... Um, kind of like I'd hold grudges against people and I'd get really angry about things and I pro was probably a bit self-centered and a bit greedy um, and I'm not ashamed to admit that um, that for me was the posture of my heart was just not really in a in in the place that it is now I know Jesus um, and yes when we've met Jesus like I've explained I you know things have changed and he can transform us but actually we can still be blind and we're still never never perfect people so this type of blindness is religious blindness okay i need to learn not to not to look at the screen is it aha religious blindness so that is when um <laughs> when we know Jesus but we think that we can work to earn his love. Um, and we think that it's based on what we do is how much he loves us. Um, and I'm, again, not afraid to admit, I do fall into that trap sometimes. Um, and actually, we have to remember that actually it's through grace that we meet Jesus. It's not through what we do or how perfect we are. Um, and Saul encountered the grace of God in a very dramatic way because he wasn't doing anything to work for Jesus' love. He was almost doing the complete opposite. He couldn't be further from Jesus. Um, so um, I think, really, that is proof that, you know, we can't work to earn the love of Jesus. And oh, I've lost my place again. Sometimes, even when we have met the living God, we become blind and need to, um, to rely on those around us. So I know there's been times that my faith has really dwindled, mainly when this religious blindness comes in. Um, and I, I feel far away from God. And I know that I then have to rely on those around me. So really good friends, my work colleagues, my husband. I have to rely on them to help me see Jesus again. Um, and this is really just like Ananias did in the story that we listened to. Because um, Saul encounters Jesus firstly directly, then he becomes blind, and then he has to rely on Ananias to um, help him to see Jesus again and help him to have an encounter with Jesus. Um, and we know that when it says he was blind, but then he could see. Um, huh, talking about blindness um, and needing some help from other people, uh, last week I got a letter through the post, which I expect probably like 70% of you here get 
yearly from Specsavers saying, you are due your annual eye test. And um, I read it and I thought, oh gosh, I've got a really busy few months. I've got some glasses already, like I probably don't need to go, ripped it up, put it in the bin. Later that night, got a really bad migraine. And I was like, oh, maybe I need to go for that eye test because in the past when I've had headaches, um, it's usually because my glasses are a bit out of date or I'm not wearing them. Um, so, uh, why am I telling you this? Uh, because this actually is sometimes what I can get like in my relationship with Jesus. Bear with me. Um, so, <laughs> when I first got glasses and I was in, I was probably about 14, 15, they were really cool, wore them to school every day. Yeah, everyone, I need glasses now. Yeah, I know, I look really cool. And I would wear them all the time. And I'd be really excited because I had these really cool glasses. I think they were like, they're actually really ugly glasses. I think they were like red and square and probably weren't the ones that were meant to suit me. But anyway, um, <laughs> so, and, and really that is just like when I first met Jesus. I was so excited. I went back to church that night. Uh, everything that was going on at church, I just wanted to encounter him. I wanted people to pray for me every time at the end of the service, they'd say, anyone who wants to come up for prayer, I was there. I was at the front. I just wanted to encounter Jesus and I was so, so excited. But just like my eye test, as time's gone on, the excitement and that initial buzz has worn off a little bit. And at times, like I ignored my eye test, I think I can ignore Jesus. And I think we probably all can. Um, and actually, um, just like having regular eye tests and wearing my glasses helps me to stop getting headaches and to be able to see clearly, actually regular encounters with Jesus keeps me being able to see, to be able to see clearly and stops me becoming blinded by worldly things or blind by the, the religious blindness that I spoke about, that kind of wanting to earn God's love. Um, and yeah, so I guess my question for you today is, is there things that are stopping you from encountering Jesus regularly? Are there things that are blurring your... Um, blurring your vision of, of Jesus and who he is. Um, because just like, you know, I, I ripped up the Specsavers letter and put it in the bin, but if I really then wanted to go for an eye test, they'd probably still let me have an eye test. And that's just like Jesus. Like, even if we do discount him or we, we don't give him time, we don't encounter him, he's still there. He's still there with open arms. And if, if, if you decide that today is the day you want to encounter him again, he's there waiting for you. Um, so what can we learn and take away from the story that we've read today from Saul? So firstly, um, Jesus is longing to have an encounter with each and every one of us. It doesn't matter where we've come from, what we've done, wh whether we've been blinded. Um, Saul was going around threatening people and Jesus still wanted to have an encounter with him. Um, and it doesn't matter, yeah, it just doesn't matter how blinded from the truth we are. He wants to help us see. And secondly, Jesus wants us to help other people encounter him. So Saul first encountered Jesus directly, but the second time he encountered Jesus was through Ananias. And Ananias helped Saul to see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And as Christians, Jesus calls us to help others see the Holy Spirit. And actually, he instructs us to be non-judgmental. So when we look at the story, um, Ananias raises concerns to Jesus and says, you know, I've heard about this man. He's awful. Like, he's been doing all this, this bad stuff. And you want me to go to him and, and help him encounter you? And Jesus says, uh, yeah, yeah, I do. And, and he doesn't change his instruction. And Ananias faithfully serves Jesus and, and goes and does what he's instructed to do. And, and, and that's not just for Ananias, that's for all of us. You know, it's really, it's really easy to love lovely people. And I know John touched on this last week. Um, but actually, is, are there people in your lives that, that Jesus is putting on your heart that you think, oh, I'm not sure about them? you know, they, they, they did this a couple of months ago, or they did this, and I didn't really agree with that. Are, are there people that are, you know, being put on your heart that maybe isn't easy for you to go and have an encounter with? 
So how can we encounter Jesus for ourselves and for other people today? So I've got two top tips, and they're pretty mm, obvious or not that, you know, um, they are... I wish I had something like, I've got two top tips and they're amazing and they're like something that I've only thought of, but they're not. They're just really simple. And the first one is pray. Pray and ask to encounter Jesus today. You know, we the the we often are blinded, um, as I said, by thinking we have to be a certain way or act a certain way or be in a certain position to be able to pray and receive Jesus's love. But he just wants us as we are. If we're having a really bad day and we're angry at God, he still wants to hear about that. You know, you don't have to be in a, a really, really good place um, to be able to pray and, and reach out and encounter Jesus. So that's how we can encounter him for ourselves. So just pray and reach out. And then how can we enc- help others encounter him? It's, it's, uh, you probably might be able to predict what I'm going to say. Pray for others to encounter Jesus. So... That involves a lot, actually. Um, That involves seeing other people through Jesus' eyes, and that's not always that easy to do. So what that means is we have to practice forgiveness a lot, um, and we have to pray for other people. Um, and, And also what that involves, as I said earlier, is listening to the call that Jesus is putting on your heart for people. So if you do find that, I don't know, someone down the road, one of your neighbors, you're, you're seeing them a bit more frequently or you're, they're, they're popping up in your thoughts a bit more. Like, press into that and pray and say, you know, God, are you putting on this person on my in my mind for a reason? Yes, okay, maybe they might have done this or that or, you know, we're not that close or... But actually, you know, listen to God. He may be doing that for a reason and, and that person might really need, need your prayers. Um, so, um, that's my two top tips. Um, and yes, they are top tips, but actually I think the key point to remember is God is sovereign over everything. And I can give you tips, but actually um, God God is, is over this all. And, and yes, we can pray for other people, we can pray for ourselves, but but actually God doesn't need us to do that. Um, if he, Like he did with Saul, you know, Saul was completely blind, he didn't know God, he didn't even know he was blind, and God still came in and just stepped in, so um, I just, you know, praying for other people and praying for ourselves is, is, is all we, is what we can do to encounter Jesus, but actually God's, God's got it in his hands as well, um, and just on the final point really, while I'm talking about praying for others, we had an amazing worship night on Monday. Um, for those of you who are there, it, you'll know how good. And, you know, Jesus was here and so many people encountered him. Um, and Dan did um, an amazing talk at the front where he, um, he him and Gina, was, I don't actually know where Gina is. Well, she's probably gone out. <laughs> they um, they spoke about actually how do we pray for other people and how do we do that really well. Um, so for anyone who wasn't there, I'd really encourage you to go back and have a little look at that on YouTube because I could stand here and then say how do we pray for other people, but Dan has already done it and aced it. So um, yeah, we just as a church had a, an amazing evening and um, yeah, it, it was just I really wanted to mention that. Um, so now I would love to invite Anna back up to um, lead us in some worship. And um, if you've never encountered Jesus, or if you have, but you haven't for a while, my encouragement for you today, whilst we go into this time of worship and prayer, would be to just open yourself up and welcome him, him in and say, Jesus, like, I, I'm here, and I want to have an encounter with you. Um, and after Anna's done her first song, Dan and myself are going to come up, and we've got some um, words of encouragement that during our prayer time as a staff team this morning um, came up. So we're going to share some of those, and we're going to lead in a time of prayer, and then we'll do one, one final song um, to close the service. So, yeah, I'd invite you to stand so we can worship, and then we'll pray. Thank you.